All right, we're back for again another session of going over cybersecurity, infrastructure management, and it's all about how automation is so incredibly critical to this entire scenario. But this time, I wanted to step back and talk more about team dynamics because I can't emphasize this enough. And this is something that I really like to go over in a lot of detail. Something I like to hammer home in a big way inside of SoftStack. And that is how important team dynamics really are. When we step back and we look at the teams that are managing infrastructures, we really can break them down into three macro groups. And that is going to be the development team, the operations team, and the security team. Now, over the years, we've mangled these teams. We've shoveled them around. There are many aspects to the development team. There are many aspects to the operations teams. And there are many aspects to the security teams. And I don't want to oversimplify the fact that these dynamics exist, but I think that it's really important that we are able to step back and understand how these three macro functions work. Depending on what company you're in and how your pipelines and delivery mechanisms are prepared and set up, it changes with the fabric and the feel of these teams really are. So what this boils down to is that we're dealing with dramatically different motivations, dramatically different goals, and dramatically different driving forces behind these individual teams. When we come back and we look at the development teams, for instance, they have a strong need to create the next application. We keep saying shift left. That shift is moving things over to the development team. So why is it that we want to shift left? And why is it that today we seem to trust the development teams more and more? How did this cultural phenomenon come about? Because when we go back in time, that's not necessarily how things used to be. They used to be that we had very isolated teams managing very isolated components of our infrastructure. We go back in time 15 years, and it was very common that operations was fundamentally separate. The way in which they would work is that operations would say, this is the platform that I am going to give you. And the development teams would need to work with that platform. And the cybersecurity teams would come back and be very focused on hardening those platforms. This made the rollout of infrastructure, frankly, from an operations perspective, much more manageable. Because what happened is that they were able to enforce standards, standard mechanisms, and then push those mechanisms forward. But this didn't sit well with development teams. First off, a significant amount of power rested in the operations team. And if we go even further back in history, developers have traditionally really not gotten along with the operations teams. One of my favorite historic figures, I say historic, he's still alive. He won't watch this, so he'll never know that I called him a historic figure. But one of my favorite figures along these lines is Richard Stallman. One of the main reasons why Richard Stallman started the Free Software Foundation was because he hated the operations teams. He's a software developer, a system software developer. And he says, I'm really sick of the fact that I don't have any control over the platform that I'm developing against. And so he said, I want more freedom in my development. And he extended that into legal freedoms and all the things that we enjoy from a free software perspective. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Richard Stallman is, uh, seriously, go look the guy. Now, 
you know, honestly, Richard Stallman is one of the founders of the open source software movement, the founder of the Free Software Foundation. And actually, again, if you heard me say that he was a founder of the open source software movement, he would get after me. And anybody who understands this dynamic it, it is laughing in the chairs right now. But I can't see because I'm talking to you through it. So, this motivation of developer wanting to control the platform that they're executing on goes back a long ways. And the developer should be able to control the platform. It gives them so much more flexibility than what they're able to do and what they're able to deliver. But when developers control platform, we end up with an insane amount of sprawl. And this sprawl, if I'm correct, has gotten a lot worse in recent years. The sprawl has gotten worse because we take that platform and we keep compartmentalizing it down into smaller pieces. It used to be that you would request from operations as a developer, you'd say, hey, I need a server. And operations would reply and say, here's your three flavors of server that you can get. Um, and it's going to take you two months. If you want it in one month, uh, then for the next two weeks, I need you every day to drop off a large case of Coca-Cola at my office. So needless to say, developers didn't like that. So they, they wrote the code that compartmentalized it down. So instead of needing to request a server now, you can just spin up a virtual machine. Instead of spinning up a virtual machine, we can create containers. And now those containers are just thrust upon the operations teams. And so when it comes to DevOps, a joke I like to say is that ops lost. The developers won. DevOps really was to say, hey, we're just going to let the developers write development for operations. But the reality is, is that developers don't want to be an operator because surprise, surprise, they're developers. That's what they chose to do. They don't wake up in the morning and get really, really excited about the latest additions to the Linux kernel, like I do. But when we come back and we look at this dynamic, these teams shift back and forth and how much power authority we give to specific teams and specific companies and in specific scenarios. So, where do we end up inside of this larger dynamic? If we step back and take a look at these teams, developers and operations still don't get along. And I have to admit, I feel like a lot of the reasons why they don't comes more from operations now because they come back and say, I just have to deal with whatever these guys throw at me. And they don't seem to understand the maintenance burden and cost of the platforms that are thrown at me. And so we take this DevOps dynamic that continues to go and continues to be a struggle. And now, since we're Black Hat, we throw a flaming ball of security into that mix and say, hey guys, you've actually figured a lot of this stuff out, have some cybersecurity. Wow. Neither of these guys ever like cybersecurity, so at the very least, we've got a common enemy now. And cybersecurity never, frankly, got along too terribly well with development and operations. Mostly because the security teams come in and they say, no, 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 no. You can't do these things, they're security problems. And the developer says, dude, I got a deadline. And I'm going to write sloppy SQL code, okay? And the security people say, I'm going to make sure that you're the one who gets, uh, gets it when this gets hacked. And oftentimes they don't succeed. These difficult dynamics add another layer of complexity because the security that's imposed on developers and operations oftentimes impedes their ability to do their own jobs. Well, now we've got a problem, a classic scenario of impedance, a scenario of friction. 
a scenario where we're not able to build strong collaboration between teams that at the end of the day have the same large scale macro goal. That large scale macro goal, it's not that the security team gets to give a clean report to the auditors. It's not necessarily that that feature is deployed. And it's not just that we have uptime from our infrastructure. That large scale goal is that the business can run and execute what it needs to run and execute. That it can do so securely and safely. Because that's really what we care about. That's the big picture. So, how is it that we can take these warring clans and get them to work together? One of the things that's really important here has to do with making life easier. This is something that we do with technology that I don't think that we really understand. I don't think that we understand that this is the primary goal of creating all this technology in the first place. It's to make our lives easier. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at technology and looked at its net result and said, that was a complete and utter failure. Because a certain piece of technology resulted in our lives being more complicated, more difficult, and everything being worse. And I'm sure that all of you out there can think of a number of pieces of technology which we could, we could hang our hat on and say, I think that this made the world the worst place now. All right, how do we make technology then that makes things better? We need things to be easier, more fluid, and we need things to be, again, easier, but with a result that's secure and right. What do we need to do here? Instead of focusing our technology first on solving the technical problems, which, surprise, surprise, is what technologists do, because those are kind of the most important problems to people like us. We see a technical problem that we want to solve it, and we don't realize that sometimes we're making new technical problems in the act of solving that very problem. So, what is it that we need to do? First, assess the human problems. Well, but we're in tech. How do we even know what the human problems are? We start by assessing what these teams are and what their needs are. What are the goals? Once we understand their goals and who they are, we can build a better picture of where we want to go. Once we know where we want to go, then we can drive a unified goal. And we can accomplish that unified goal through collaboration between these teams as our primary motivator. Instead of our primary motivator being constantly looking for tech to solve whatever band-aid we need to we need to apply to the patient right now. So if we step back and we ask ourselves, okay, the big picture is a secure infrastructure with continuous application deployment and an easy and manageable development pipeline where the necessary flexibility is given to each team to be able to do their jobs. Okay. Oftentimes, security is seen as an impedance. And I've said this a lot, and, and, and it is. We say, oh, you're going to have to log on to a VPN. No, you, if you don't have the firewalls configured properly, it's not okay. And, and it's this constant need to jump through hoops. Smart security teams step back and say, how can we implement these plans in such a way that it will enable the users to get their jobs done better? How can we take security and usability and bring them together? 
first off, it helps if the people who have to deal with the security understand why they're doing it. It also helps when their workflows become integrated. So when we step back, we can say that the security needs have to be embedded directly into the workflows of the operations and development teams. Because the developers are the ones, frankly, creating security issues. And the operations teams are creating security issues. So how do we do it? We can do this with shared ground. It's all about shared mutual ground. When we have shared ground, what we're able to accomplish is really dramatic. Because what we do is that we're able to say we have shared ground because of shared goals and shared outcomes and shared wins and shared responsibility and accountability. So, what happens when you get hacked? Who gets in trouble? The security teams. What if the fault truly lies with operations because they didn't update those systems? We have to step back and ask these bigger questions then. What about the culture of this organization has prevented us from making these things happen? Here at SaltStack, our goals revolve heavily around building tools that give common ground between teams. The goal of the operations team is to deliver a secure infrastructure, but they need to share in that win and share that work with the security team. The security team needs to be brought closer to the infrastructure. They need to be brought closer to an understanding of what is driving the cybersecurity issues that we are dealing with. And the operations team needs to be brought closer to the security. Now, again, shift left, shift left. We are doing a lot of that means that the developers need to be trained. They need to know what a CWE is. The developers need to know how to check their own vulnerabilities in their own pipeline. The developers need to be able to reference those lists of common vulnerability mistakes that the cybersecurity teams are only too familiar with. Also, from a management perspective, we need to be able to better assess the open source software that the developers are throwing in. We want developers to have flexibility to pick random pieces of open source software off the shelf, certainly. But we need to be able to address, is this open source software going to open up those problems? And then we also need to figure out how to bring security all the way left into that pipeline so that they are able to be part of the conversation around, we want to add these new dependencies to our software stack. And so that they can look and say, we understand why we want these dependencies in the software stack, but what are the liabilities that we need to be able to do? What are the potential pitfalls that we need to do? Then these teams can make collaborative decisions together. When that is all said and done, again, we have to create the common ground that everyone can talk about. That common ground comes through automation. It comes through being able to not only automate the DevOps pipeline, but also the infrastructure management systems and creating pipelines out of that. This is where SaltStack comes in. The SaltStack SecOps products are built to be able to allow collaboration between the security and the operations teams. They're built so that we can have a single pane of glass that brings in information from other security scanners and translates that information directly into how to deliver those fixes. It's a platform that the security and the operations teams can collaborate through, making it easier to do what we need to do at the end, which is deliver real security, not just looking at the scenario and hoping that we're able to learn everything. Hopefully this talk has been helpful. 
again, if anyone has any questions, please reach out to uh, our salt stack team members who are in the virtual booth, and they're more than happy to help. And even if you ask them a hard question that they can't handle, we can float it up to the right people and get you an answer. Uh, we're excited to see all of you at Black Hat, and we hope that you've had an excellent time uh, with this virtual conference. Thank you.